is David Rosado, Director of CF Insights. And I wanna welcome you all to Community Foundation Benchmarking to Make Smarter Decisions. Um, this is going to be my picture on the left and I will be joined by Kurt Detjen, um, the President and CEO of the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region and Juan Carlos Mido Kudaka, um, Operations Coordinator at the Community Foundation uh, as well, um, working with Kurt. Um, and we're gonna hear from the two of them in just a few moments. Um, I will just quickly mention that you can find their full bios on the Passable website. Um, and so you're gonna be hearing from them too shortly. And if you wanna learn more about them, um, you, can, you can learn more by just visiting their bios on Passable. Um, but as I will um, go ahead and kick us off, I mentioned this during our welcome session earlier today, but CF Insights or Community Foundation In Insights asks, what if each community foundation could know what all community foundations collectively know? And what I was talking about earlier was about the different ways in which we approach that question, um, primarily through um, the, uh, the community foundation data that we collect on an annual basis. Um, and so I'm gonna be focusing on that piece of the puzzle there is that data collection. Earlier this year, we embarked on an intense process to completely rebuild and redesign the, um, the then aging uh, CF Insights survey data and benchmarking platform from the ground up on an entirely new, um, an entirely new technology, modern technology, to make it more modern, to make it more responsive, to make it, frankly, more pleasant to use. Um, you can get to it at data.cfinsights.org. Um, and uh, we wanted to make sure that this new platform that we've rebuilt was to make it as easy as possible for you uh, folks with a community foundation to get the data you need so that your time is saved for the implementation of strategic organizational decisions, um, any shifts in strategy uh, that would be informed by peer benchmarking. Uh, later in the session, I'm going, I'm going to actually be giving a detailed walkthrough of these refreshed benchmarking tools, and I want us to treat this a little bit like a user group. Um, I want you to be prepared to ask any questions, technical or otherwise, about how to access or use this data, um, about our survey um, platform as well, which, which is what we use to inform this data or what we use to, to populate this data. Um, and I would also highly appreciate any feedback you might have about how we can continue to improve on this platform to better serve your community foundation. Um, lastly, I will mention that there is a poll that is set up on Pathable. Um, I hope you can all see that on the Pathable page. There should be a tab that says um, polls. And um, we are asking for feedback on every session. But in addition to that, we have a poll set up asking just how experienced you are with the benchmarking platform. Um, it could be either with the new version of it, um, which, is, which launched fairly recently, or it could be um, uh, experience with the older version, which, which um, was online for a number of years. So if you have uh, experience with the platform, you wanna hear about it and how much experience you have. Um, so feel free to take that poll, share your vote, um, and, and that will sort of help us guide the conversation that we have later in the demonstration. But for now, um, let's go ahead and hear from a couple of your Community Foundation colleagues. And I'm gonna start with, with Kurt. Um, if you can share your story about a strategic decision or a shift that you had to make um, and how you approach the idea of understanding where your organization was, um, where it was as an organization in the context of the wider field and in comparison specifically with your peers. Kurt, take it away. Thank you, David. And thanks for inviting Mito and myself to be with you today. Um, um, our community foundation is based in Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, you can see behind me, I left my, uh, I left my background on so you can see a, an autographed Packer football from the Super Bowl teams back in the 1960s. We're in Packer country here. Um, we got started as a community foundation in the, the mid 1980s, much like many. And, um, and, and a part of my message in talking about the early history is we benefit as a community foundation from from a lot of expertise and coaching from the field. Uh, back in those days, in the late 80s, there were a lot of community foundations coming online and the, the Mott Foundation in particular was very supportive of the growth of community foundations. And we were selected among many applicants to be uh, uh, the beneficiary of a mentoring program that was offered by the Mott Foundation to new community foundations. And, we benefited from a lot of the things that CF Insights gives us today, the benefit of the learnings of what others in the industry know, 
but we as an early community foundation didn't necessarily know. You fast forward that to today, uh, 35 years later, and David, if you would advance the slide one more, you can see, uh, you can see from uh, uh, a number of years ago, the, uh, the chart shows you the progression of uh, comparison of assets that we've had and how we've grown as an organization over time and the number of full-time equivalent positions, which is the example I'm gonna share with you in a moment. Um, we have gone through a pretty rapid growth phase and uh, consistently rank in the top 50 or 60 community foundations in the country for most of the major metrics that are measured by community foundations, assets, contributions, grants, and that kind of thing. Uh, so uh, ours is a story of uh, you know, an upper Midwestern community foundation, relatively young, strong growth surge. And if you take a look at that 2017 through 2020 uh, portion of the graph, that's the portion that I'm gonna be talking about because that's when some important things happened in the life of our community foundation. You can see the assets grew tremendously and you can see that our FTEs grew uh, by about a third during that period. So if you advance to the next one, David. So we've been using, uh, in a, we were an early adopter for CF Insights. We're one of the first, uh, first community foundations to sign on because we understand the importance of data, not only to understand ourselves, but to understand how you compare and frankly, opportunities to improve as an organization. You can see here our expense ratio uh, comparison with other community foundations. We like to benchmark ourselves generally against Midwestern uh, community foundations for obvious reasons. Um, we also like to take a look at some organizations that are a little bit larger than us and how we're aspiring to become uh, successful like they are in that next cohort. So we've moved pretty quickly over the over the years into uh, an organization that today is over a half a billion in assets. Uh, we've always looked up to the Greater Milwaukee Foundation. You see them in the middle and the St. Paul Community Foundation as being some of our, uh, you know, some of our uh, aspirational community foundations, if you will. Our ratio considerably lesser than the others, and that's a point I'm gonna make in a moment. So if you advance to the next slide, David. And again, same, uh, same cohort group. We, uh, this is a chart that shows you the number of charitable funds under administration as a ratio of FTEs. And you can see, you know, we compare, um, I would call us more prudently, uh, at least looking at the chart, um, tend to uh, hire less people to do the same amount of work. And in fact, um, uh, pretty large disparity between us and some of our larger community foundation cohorts in terms of the amount of uh, charitable funds assigned to any individual in the organization. Um, and that's kind of where the, where the story gets to. And um, if you can just back up a couple of slides back to that line graph again, David, then I'll just, I'll speak from that one. The um, uh, 2018, the, our community foundation was a, you can see there, we were at a, at a about 325 million in assets, you saw a big bump going into 2018. That represented in large part um, a gift of $100 million that came in from a single donor estate. Uh, we as an organization were very prudently managing our financial affairs. Our board was pretty careful, uh, but we had tremendous needs for service. And frankly, we had been a little behind the curve in terms of process improvement, going through growth phases, and data management and use of our technologies and our tools. So we had some catch up to do. And I used, uh, I used the data that I got from the CF Insights reporting essentially to paint that picture. We're a pretty prudent community foundation. You can see our expense ratio being fairly low. Our, um, our, uh, our number of funds, our assets per FTE. In all those metrics, we're a little bit more conservatively, prudently managed than, than some of our peers. But I needed to paint the picture for my executive committee and my board that it was okay to staff up because we had obviously a tremendous increase in assets and the demand that was gonna be generated from that relationship and the aspirations of a community that now sees the community foundation in a different light. They expect more from us. Uh, so you can see there that um, I had to paint that picture to say our larger 
peer comparables uh, generally have higher staffing levels. Um, they're comfortable with, with uh, a little higher expense ratio, expense to assets than what we have been comfortable with. And sometimes you need to, you need to make those capacity investments in order to be able to drive and sustain and provide that level of service that you need to as an organization to drive you through to the next levels of growth. Uh, my executive committee and board really found these graphs very, very helpful. And uh, it helped them to get comfortable making those decisions. And, uh, uh, and I guess what I would, what I would say is the, um, uh, the data that we get is only as good as the contributions that come in. Uh, we've been a contributor in adding data, and I hope others are using our data for comparison. We have used others uh, very, very aggressively over the years. And I encourage any of you that aren't right now participating in this in the CF Insights report, get on board, uh, use it for yourselves and use it for, for the benefits that you can give to the entire sector. Uh, we're only as good as, as what we can do collectively. And frankly, we, we always celebrate the big wins that come from our peers. Anything that's good in one community foundation is good for the sector. And that's the way we look at it. Um, and CF Insights helps us to do that very thing. Um, I'm going to pivot to my colleague Mito Kudaka, who's joining us actually from Peru today. Uh, one of the first assignments I gave to Mito when he joined our organization a couple of years ago was to dig into the data because we needed to build some of these messages for, for our board of directors. And so I'm going to let Mito just talk a little bit about that story. And thank you, Mito, for joining us. Skirt, and thank you, everybody, for joining today. Uh, it's really an, an honor to be able here to share a little bit of our story. Um, as Kurt was mentioning, the data that we've been able to glean from CF Insights has been just wonderful to help us uh, provide that supporting documentation and stories as to how we can make decisions that will improve our operations and strategies. Um, it's right when I first started, actually, second day I was on the job, uh, Kurt said, uh, Mito, would you mind going into CF Insights? I needed to learn what CF Insights was all about, uh, new to the field at that time. And he said, I believe it will only take you a couple hours to be able to gather the information. And the information is all there. We contribute to it, and as well as other community foundations around the US. So I started learning about it. I don't know if I connect with David or somebody else, but they provided me the access and a quick intro. And I started going at it. Um, one of the great things about CF Insights is it really does provide you with all that information you may want to want to learn from others and about yourselves, and also historical data about you. The challenge that I was having was the user interface and the responsiveness of the system. Um, just a little understanding, I do use CF Insights, uh, not on a very regular basis, but quite extensively, at least a couple of times a year. Um, by extensively, I mean I, I probably too much of a data geek as I've been labeled a couple of times already today, right, Kurt? Um, but uh, I, I think it's it's an accurate uh, label for me because I like to dig into what the data can provide us with to glean information from it. And as David already knows as well, I was trying to download and see every single report that was available so that I can then comprehend the landscape of data and information I can utilize. But in order to do so, I had to run a report for every single uh, data point that was available. You can only run one single report per data point, and then I will download it all and then aggregate all of the different reports into one single table. Uh, only then was I able to start doing my analysis. The challenge was the system was slow and cumbersome and um, things it would probably take me about a day, day and a half to just be able to gather the data. And then once the data was gathered, then I was able to do my analysis. Um, again, I only use this about a couple of times every year for the last two and a half years. But what I'm happy to report is that this experience, uh, this new experience with a new platform is much improved. And it's just amazing. I'm um, very happy to be able to see how I have been able to use it as an end user and be able to retrieve data that uh, in previous times in the previous platform would take me hours, I've been able to do it in minutes. And not only that, it all is aggregated into one single space, 
which you can then very easily download and then do your analysis. Um, I am very happy to report that uh, this experience, at least from my perspective, is very much improved. And um, not only do I believe that I'll be able to leverage this by learning more about all the peers and their successes in the future as I uh, utilize CF Insights platform on a regular basis, but uh, maybe going in there quickly and trying to learn more on an ad hoc basis as to how others are doing. It is just that simple and that much more improved. So um, kudos to CF Insights, kudos to David and his team for improving on this platform. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing uh, others' contributions to this platform as uh, echoing Kurt's message. The more participation we have, the more informed we'll be and the better for the field. David? Thanks so much, Kurt. Thanks so much, Mito, for sharing your experience with us today. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, hope you both will stay on with us for our Q&A piece a little bit later. Um, we're going to transition now to a little bit of a demonstration of the new tools. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned at the start, when I was sharing the slide deck earlier, what we wanted to set out to do was to make a, a platform that was much more intuitive and much easier to work with, because ultimately the time should not have been spent gathering the data and actually downloading the data. The time should have been spent utilizing the data and making making decisions with that with that data. So um, I think we were successful at doing that. Um, it was, you know, it was great to hear that your experience was a much improved one <laughs> on the new platform. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and share my screen, which will just take me half a second here. And I'm just going to walk you through um, the benchmarking tools themselves. And so I might have mentioned this already, and actually, let me just pause real quick and make sure that folks see a Chrome window that's at, on data.cfinsights.org. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Wonderful. So um, data.cfinsights.org um, is the new URL for the, for the, for the database. Um, if you happen to have the old bookmark, it'll just redirect here, so you'll be taken straight to the this, to this site, um, so you can't miss it. But um, what I'll mention at the top, even before I get into the benchmarking piece, is that we wanted to um, bring the, the look and the feel of the site, but also the experience of the site much more in line with other candid data systems. And so I alluded to this during my welcome remarks earlier in the day, but we have been working really hard to uh, become one candid, so to speak, um, since we formed uh, from, from uh, Classic Foundation Center and, and Classic GuideStar in 2019. Um, and CF Insights was a part of Foundation Center previously. And so what we wanted to do was make sure that, that this platform, like all of, our, all of our platforms, had a consistent um, experience and had a consistent look and a consistent feel. And so one of the things that we did um, is not just uh, give it a visual facelift, but also um, CF Insights is now part of Candid's um, overall one login solution. So I mentioned that because I'm not logged in right now. I'm just on data.cfinsights.org and I'm just like any other end user, not currently logged in. But if I was going to go ahead and log in, I'm going to get taken to a Candid One login page. And um, this will work if you have credentials um, you know, with GuideStar.org, with Foundation Directory, with the Funding Information Network uh, community. And those same credentials will also get you access to, to this website. Um, if you are logging into the CF Insights data platform for the first time, um, you're just going to be asked a couple of very simple questions just to verify that it's somebody from a community foundation specifically who's trying to get access to this. Um, it'll just ask your title and uh, the name of your community foundation, and then we review the login, um, the login, and give you full access um, so that you can get so that you can get full access to the database. But once you are in, you're going to be taken back to the homepage of data.cfinsights.org, and you are going to be faced with a number of links along the top. I happen to be a uh, an admin user, so you're going to see some additional settings here that you wouldn't see as an end user, but you will see um, home, my foundation, my surveys benchmarking and FAQ. Um, and I will mention very briefly, although I will not spend time on these two pages for the purposes of this demo, if you have any questions about either, I'm happy to go back to them. But my foundation is essentially just a profile page about your foundation. And so it has the name of your community foundation, your location, uh, the definition of your service area, uh, your fiscal year end date. So if it's June 30, March 31st, uh, December 31st, you know, that's where you indicate that. And a couple of other very uh, sort of uh, the basic, um, you know, vital, vital um, pieces of information about your community foundation. Um, if we go to my surveys, and I'll just go here very quickly, 
And actually I'm realizing that I am now tied to an organization that's not a community foundation. So I will change that very, very quickly um, and show you what the survey looks like. And Kurt Mito, if you don't mind, I hope it's okay for me to pretend I am a member of your community foundation for just a brief moment. Um, but if I go to my surveys, you're going to see a, um, a series of tiles. And so what this shows is all of the annual surveys that you have ever completed um, through CF Insights. And so what we were able to do is actually migrate all of the old data that you've ever entered in from into the old system, from the old system into this new site. So nothing was lost there. Um, it's all here, and that will help, of course, with uh, the creation of any sort of longitudinal benchmarking reports. But <clears throat> when there is a new survey that is open, um, there will be a new tile there with a very clear status update that says new, and then you can click that tile to, to uh, fill in a new annual survey and give us your latest information. Um, I will mention very briefly that the, um, the report that we are putting together right now that I was talking a little bit about during my welcome remarks earlier today are going to be based on fiscal year 2020 data. So if you have not given us fiscal year 2020 data, um, now is definitely the time. Um, so please um, register on the site if you haven't already. Uh, log in, give us your 2020 data, and help us create a nice um, sample uh, data sample for us to draw some conclusions about the field um, um, referencing or reflecting fiscal year 2020. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do is focus on benchmarking, and that's why we're here today. So when you go to benchmarking, um, there is, it's initially not going to look like there's very much there, but that's because you have full control over the data that you pull into this page. And any data point at all that you share with us via the survey is available on this page from any of your peers of your choosing. So I'm going to start by creating a new peer group. And so to create a new peer group, very straightforward, you click new peer group. And the first thing you're gonna be asked to do is to give it a name. So I'm going to give it a Network Days demo name. And from there, you are going to be asked to provide a characteristic, which is to say it's a, it's a, it's a filtered search. It's a, a safe search, essentially. So what we mean by characteristics are any of the data, again, that we've collected on our database through our surveys is, avail is available here for you to filter other peers. And so I'm gonna start with something very basic and I'm going to look for community foundations that have participated with us um, and given us fiscal year 2019 or later data uh, or later um, information from, from either of those two years, 19 or 20. So I'm gonna put in survey year is on or after 2019. And then you can add as many characteristics you want at once, which is something that actually was not possible before. You have to do one at a time and then refresh the page. I see Mito nodding, <laughs> he knows very well. Um, one at a time and then refresh and then one at a time and then refresh over and over. But now you can add as many characteristics as you want at one time. So if we say, give me foundations that have participated in our fiscal year 2019 survey or later, and that are between uh, let's say uh, total gross assets of, and I'll, I'll make it a very wide range um, of between 250 and $500 million. I'm going to add two characteristics because I need to tell the system to define a range. And to define a range, you basically need to combine two characteristics. So total foundation assets are above 250 and total foundation gross assets are below 500, so is less than 500. And so I'm going to click show results and that will give us a listing of community foundations that, that, fit, that, that fit that criterion, right? So I said on or after 2019 is great. So we actually have a couple of foundations that have already given us 2021 data. Thank you to those two. Um, they have a huge head start on next year's survey. Um, and then we have a number of 2020 surveys here and a number of 2019 surveys as well. Any data that fulfill those characteristics or that, that would, um, that would uh, satisfy those criteria that you define will show up in this table. So as I mentioned, it's 2019 or later, and if they're between 250 and $500 million in assets in that year, they are going to get pulled into this table. So the first thing you're going to see here is that there are a couple of foundations that are listed more than once, right? So Elkhart County is the first one. Um, so they're in 2021, they had $418 million in assets at the close of 2021, $315 million in assets at the end of 2020, uh, 
there's quite a jump in, in one year right there. So um, because they fit that criteria twice, they're in the table twice. So if you want to make sure that you're only seeing the most recent data on every uh, community foundation that fulfill these criteria, you want to make sure that you click that checkbox and then you're going to click show results again. And now you're going to see that the second Elkhart County, the second instance of Elkhart County in Indiana um, is no longer there. We only have their most recent data, which is now 2021. Um, that is a very, very basic way to define a peer group using a criterion, um, using a characteristics. There is no limit to the number of characteristics that you can add. I can add 100 of them here if I, if I really want to and come up with a peer group that is highly specific to my needs. There is also no limit to the number of peer groups that you can create as well. So every time you create a peer group, it gets added to your drop down menu, menu of available peer groups. Um, and so if I save this one, which I, I won't for this purpose because I would end up saving it to the Fox Valley Regions uh, account, um, then they would see Network Days Demo as a second option here. It would say Network Days Demo by David Rosado um, as a peer group that they can access. Um, so all peer groups that folks at the foundation create are saved at the community foundation level, which is a major change from the old system where it was saved on the ind individual user level. So if a staff member left the community foundation and they no longer had access to that user account, um, the peer groups that they created are also gone with them. Um, but now it's saved at the community foundation level so that it's shared among all staff that have a login at that community foundation. So you can make changes to that peer group and collaborate on that peer group together as a team. Or if you want to make sure that you don't um, uh, dramatically change a peer group that a staff member at the foundation has created, you can make a duplicate of that peer group save a copy, and then make any changes that you might want to make to that peer group. Um, if we define our characteristics, right, and again, it's 250 to $500 million in assets, we have our, our list of foundations here, um, and we have 20, 23 foundations listed here. So again, this, this includes foundations that have given us data uh, anytime over the last two years. But let's say you want to go ahead and add additional characteristics to this table without necessarily um, eliminating any foundations that are on this list, right? Because if I say, um, I also want to see, you know, what their uh, FTE totals are, full-time equivalents, right? So how many staff do they have? Um, I want to know what their total operating expenses were in that year. I want to know what the percentage of, of uh, assets are in donor advice funds for these community foundations. But I don't necessarily want to define a characteristic because then I have to tell the system to eliminate some portion of these because I'm giving it an upper or low, lower limit, right? So more than 10 staff or more than 50% of the donor advice fund assets, right? Um, in the old system, you had to do that. Um, and there were workarounds to, to, to doing that. Um, that worked fine. But now there is a button here that just says metrics. And if you click that, you can actually add other columns of data. So I'll add a few of them here. I will add, uh, what did I mention? Operating expenses. I mentioned total staff. And uh, let's say donor advice fund assets, I believe was the other one I mentioned. Donor advice fund assets. And let's actually go ahead and also put in donor advice fund assets as a percentage. So I was just able to add a number of columns at once. I can also reorder them so that they appear in a specific order. Um, and when I do that and I click apply, the table is going to refresh. And now we have access to all of that data on all, all of these, oops, sorry, aggressive scrolling, um, all of these community foundations, all of those data points that we just pulled into this table, right? So um, that is just a very quick way for you to put together a data table that you can then export as an Excel file and move offline. And so if you want to create charts with that data, if you want to put together a report, much like the one that Mito and Kurt uh, shared on their slides earlier, um, you can do that by, and I'm going to change the window I'm sharing right now so you can see this. And here we go. And all of that data that's on the website is right there available for you in an Excel file. And I just reformatted formatted everything as a number, so it formats cleanly. And all of that data is now available to, for you to use for internal purposes offline. Um, and 
you know, it's much faster than before. It's much more intuitive, um, but it also will allow you uh, to save your changes and come back to this um, peer group later so that you can continue to work on it at a later time. Um, one other thing I wanna mention, or actually two other things that I wanna mention here that are changes from the previous system is previously, when you search through characteristics or if you search through metrics, you had to use the drop-down menu in the old system and actually just a look for the, um, for, the, for the data point that you wanted to bring in. Right, so you had to scroll through and sort of see, you know where it was on the list, um, but you no longer have to do that, right? So two things that we did is that we eliminated options um, from the list that you've already selected, right? So you don't wanna pull in state and then pull in state again. So we make it unavailable, so you can scroll right past those that are grayed out. And the other thing, which you might've noticed me do before, um, while I was looking for some of these data points is we have, um, we also have the ability for type ahead. So if you click into one of those drop-down menus and start typing, it's going to filter out anything that you've typed in as a as a uh, as a filter as a data point. So let me click apply again, and now we have unrestricted assets in addition to our donor advisement assets. And I also want to mention that we are also um, bringing in and actually still working on um, some of it is available to, uh, curation features. So we have a number of what we call metric sets that allow you to not have to search for three or four or five columns at a time if you want to look for a number of columns at once. But we actually have these metric sets that are groups of columns that will um, essentially um, represent that particular KPI, right? So that distribution rate, right? That's uh, you know grants divided by assets. Um, so what we did is we created a metric set that will bring in the columns you need to get to that distribution rate, right? So assets was already there, so it didn't bring it in again, but it did also bring total foundation grants and the grants to asset ratio um, at the same time. If you want to look at the number of staff by function, you don't have to go through and click fin uh, finance and program and admin and HR and you know individually to get all of those different functions and have to look for all of them. You can just go to metric set and click staffing by function and you're gonna see finance, human resources, facilities and admin, technology development, et cetera, are all brought in at once. So you brought in eight or nine columns at the same time. And this is becoming a little bit of an unwieldy data table, but this is for uh, the purposes of demonstration to show you how much data you can actually access in just a few clicks um, and be able to, again, export this all offline. Um, I also want to mention that we have, uh, we also have always had um, a number of, of charts, um, these sort of uh, um, pre-programmed uh, pre visual data reports that you can access. Um, they, they were available on the old website. They're available now. Um, they are much more interactive now. Um, they also um, load a lot quicker. Um, but, they, but the key thing about them is that they're also highly interactive. And so I'll show you an example of that. If I click assets by product among peers, this is a look at the um, number of, or sorry, the percentage of assets um, out of the of foundation's total gross assets that are in donor advised funds, field of interest funds, geographic affiliates, scholarships, et cetera. And you're gonna see this visual just pop up on the screen uh, more or less instantly, right? So if you hover over any of these data points, you can actually see the specific data here, right? So for Stark Community Foundation in Ohio, um, they have 19% of their assets in donor advised funds. But this is also interactive in, in that you can toggle on or off any individual data points so that you can isolate something that you might be most interested in. So for the purposes of DAFs, let's say, I'm going to turn off all of the other data points and only isolate DAFs. Um, and so you can see that that's the only bar that's left, right? And if you turn them on, they will repopulate and uh, be, uh, be put back onto the chart for you to, to navigate. And again, you're gonna notice that there's an export button here. But you can actually export this two different ways. Um, one is you can export this as a visual and it's super simple to do. You click, right click, I should say, and um, you can save the image. Um, directly from the website, and you can just throw that into a PowerPoint presentation um, or, or otherwise use it offline. So it's a, 
it's a static image, right? And, but, it, but it saves that visual for you. Um, but you can also export it as an Excel. And that is where this feature is going to be especially useful because when I open this Excel file, you're not going to see what is a Stark, right? So 19% of their assets are in donor advice funds. That's not where you're going to see in the Excel. What you're going to see in the Excel is for Stark, let's find Stark again, right here. It's not 20%-ish, it's not 19 19%. You're going to see it's just under $62 million of their assets are in donor advice funds. Um, so that's just a quick way for you to access um, a whole lot of data all at once. Um, it's there for you visually if you want to uh, be able to reference it just very quickly offline. But if you really want to get access to all of that data, maybe you want to make a, uh, an internally branded version of that same chart to, to present to senior staff and or board, um, you can export the data and just recreate that exact same chart um, offline. If you want to change to any of the other charts, there, the, the tiles that were available before are replaced by a drop-down menu. And, and actually there's a, let me turn off the most recent for each foundation because that messes with that chart a little bit. But if you go to year over year assets, you're gonna see the change in total assets over time for every foundation in your peer group or up to um, however many the, the, that particular chart happens to support. So if you wanna access all community foundations in a chart, even if it says it's only showing the, the 20, um, again, you would export as an Excel and then you'll be able to see the 23 uh, foundations that are in this chart. Again, just to reiterate, you can hover over any of the data points here. And if you want to filter or remove any peers from a chart, you can click them off. And then you're gonna see something else happening here too. It sort of animates rather quickly. But if there is a community foundation that is sort of messing with the, the scaling of a chart, you can click them off and the chart will resize itself so that it will make visual sense for the foundations that are left in the visual chart. So let me just click off one more Santa Barbara. And then you're gonna see that that, that chart sort of um, rescale so that it fits the data um, in that in that one visual. So um, again, these are more interactive. Uh, you can export these, and then finally, I will also mention that these um, there are also also a number of charts. Uh, these four charts here that will allow you to focus on just your community foundation over a long uh, over a, a longer period of time. So it's a longitudinal report of your community foundation's data. So these are gifts as a percentage of assets and grants as a percentage of assets over time. Um, I believe this is what Kurt was talking about when he said that there was a rather large gift that came in in 2018. So that's probably what that is right there. Um, but if you wanna check your assets over time, your gifts over time, or your grants over time, you can click between those three different charts. And again, it's, it's uh, interactive in a way that you can hover over to see individual data points or export as an Excel file. Um, I will mention for anyone on this call that is not currently a CF Insights member, the individual peer level uh, data that I'm, I've demonstrated in the um, top half of this page, if you wanna say it that way, are available to CF Insights members. Um, we do publish aggregate uh, details and other, um, and a selection of individual community foundation details um, on our website for free for anybody to access. If you want more of the very detailed information about other community foundations that would allow you to get access to these reports and this benchmarking capability that does require membership. However, if you are not a member, um, you will always be able to do two things on this, on this page. So one is you can access these reports on your community foundation. It's just a quick um, and convenient way for you to be able to gather some data on your own growth and evolution over time. But you can also, you actually can interact with this top piece here. Um, it will show you uh, your own data. So if you want to um, maybe vet some previously entered data that, that you've shared with us in the past, um, you can come to this, to this page, click on the metrics button and start pulling in um, all, of the, uh, all of the different uh, columns that we have here. And it will show your community foundation's data on that page. Um, and it's also a good demonstration to show you what, what data you can access on other community foundations 
through a membership with, um, with CF Insights. So that is all that I have on this particular page. I know that Niera was um, encouraging folks to share any questions that may have come up um, about this demo, about the survey, um, any feedback that folks may want to share, or if you have questions for Kurt and Mito about how to um, message this data internally, um, or maybe just ask them about any shifts in strategy that they have made, um, please feel free to ask those questions. So Niera, I don't know if we happen to have any questions. Otherwise, maybe I will tee one up for, for Kurt and Mito to sort of get us started. David, could I just add something that I, that I mentioned earlier? Um, one of the things that came out of our use of this data and looking at, looking at our peers is sometimes you'll see a piece of data or a trend line that looks like an outlier and it causes you to wonder, I wonder what's going on in that community foundation that causes them to be performing at such, a, at such an amazing rate. Um, and, that, and we have observed that and have followed that up with you know, strategic questions to say, well, let's learn from that organization or that, or that set of organizations that are, that are doing some of the things that strategically we'd like to do more of. Um, and uh, uh, I think, especially now with this tool, which is, it's the first demo that I've seen of it. It's really amazing. And I can't wait for Mito and I to have a chance to just sit in the conference room and, and play with it. Um, I know for our board, as we, we just got through strategic planning, and we know some of the things that we'd like to be able to do as an organization. This tool is going to help us to try to find some of the peers that we can go to to learn from, go to their websites, make a phone call, peer-to-peer -peer learning from one another. And our field is really good about that. So I'm really encouraged and excited and frankly wasn't expecting that out of today's call. Sorry, I was muted. Thanks so much, Kurt, for sharing that. Um, one thing I do want to make sure to iterate here as well is um, for folks not to let this kind of session be a replacement for any sort of one-on-one -on -one time that I, that we can provide with you. Um, you know, we we are more than happy um, at Candid to to help folks. Um, uh, you know, as they have any questions about sharing their data with us or accessing any data that, that that's here, or even um, uh, about interpreting the data in any particular way. Um, that, that is part of what we do. We want to be sure that we're working with you one-on-one um, -on -one as well. Um, so yes, yeah, so feel free to reach out if you want to have any sort of one-on-one -on -one demonstration or if you want a version of this demonstration um, you know, for your own senior staff um, and or, or anyone else that's affiliated with the Community Foundation that might be interested in learning a little bit more about how to access and leverage this data as well. So I will pause very quickly here and ask if anybody has any questions, if Niera, do you see anything on the path of the platform that we can address? We don't have any questions yet, but again, we're inviting you all. If you do have any questions, please let us know. All right, don't be shy folks. And if you have any questions too, if you, if you wanna um, unmute yourself, you can definitely feel free to do that um, as well. And we will be able to take your question verbally. Um, but I guess Kurt um, and Mito, I, I was just curious, um, you know, one question that came up for me is, you know, Kurt, you mentioned that, that you were a part of CF Insights more or less since its inception, one of the first community foundations to be involved in it. And um, I was just sort of wondering or wanted to know a little bit more about um, any conversations that, that, um, that were sort of the, the start of, or maybe kicked off, um, I should say, internal conversations about, about what, um, uh, made you most interested in um, being able to access a platform like this? If there were particular pieces of data or particular lessons that you wanted to learn from the field or from peers that you just didn't have access to previously, that maybe something like this made it, made it easier to access? I think the answer to that, David, is a, a, a couple of things. Um, one of them lies in the, in the what I would call a, a more conservative mindset fiscally from, uh, from some of my board of directors over the years. I've been here for 20 plus years, so I've had a number of different personalities and leadership styles amongst my board members. Some of them being quite fiscally conservative and just not 
not as comfortable with the concept of, of adding staff capacity, for instance, um, and being able to demonstrate this is where we are in comparison to peers. Yes, we're doing really well on an operating efficiency perspective, but gosh, we're really we're really at a tipping point with uh, with what we're asking people to do and how much how much we're putting on plates. And uh, it really helps, especially when you get into those financial conversations. That's what really got us started. Um, we were growing pretty rapidly, and we wanted to we wanted to have a, the ability to build the case for for adding the capacity when we needed to. And mm -hmm. that if we want to look more like, like our, our big brother in the state, Milwaukee, um, this is what they look like. And this is what they look like when they were about our size. And you can kind of look at the data and see how they grew over time. And we're trailing them by, we're kind of like a, a lap or two behind them on the track right now. But this is what they look like when they were our size. And this is what they look like now. And it helps it helps people to have that kind of a, a comfort level from a stewardship standpoint to just be comfortable. And those are the conversations I was having. And rather than call around and try to chase information and build our own data sets, it was so much better to have it in a comprehensive fashion like this one. Appreciate that. Thanks so much, Kurt, for that. Um, and yeah, and I think that's what we set out to do really is to try to, to make these connections that might not have existed before and just make it again, to save your time from having to make all of those phone calls. But instead, if it's a simple enough question and you're able to answer it via um, collecting some data that's already available there, there's an opportunity for you to, to access that. And then I, I think you brought up a really important point there too, Kurt, that there's still um, an important conversation that would still need to be had with some of those peers as well to get that additional context. And so, um, you know, that that part of it, you know, should, should always be kept in mind. Um, but as long as more, more time is saved for that, piece of the equation, then I think we've done our job for sure. Um, I will uh, mention too, or I will ask, I guess, and this, this goes for uh, more or less anybody in this room, because I'm seeing a lot of names of people that I have been emailing with as recently as this week. Um, so if anybody wants to share, um, I'd love to hear it. I would love to hear if there is a particular piece of data that um, you want to have access to that we currently do not post on CF Insights that you might be interested in us um, being able to make available. I, that's that's the kind of feedback that I think would be extremely valuable to us because now with this new platform, we put ourselves in a position where it is uh, much less of a lift for us to be able to iterate on it. And we intend to continue to do that next year and beyond. So um, I guess I will start with uh, my, my co-presenters here, Mito or Kurt, if you have any ideas there, and then uh, I'll open it up for anybody in the room who wants to share. And actually, um, I think you and I, David, had already had a discussion about this. Uh, we are looking at DEI, AR efforts uh, in, of our community, how we can support them, but at the same time, um, how can we best learn to, to be best prepared to be a partner in such efforts in our community? And I was asking you at one point, I think a couple of months ago, um, mm -hmm. what DEI, AR information that we have in CF Insights. And currently we don't have that much, but uh, you also guided me to the new platform for community engagement and knowledge conversations. I haven't been uh, able to join that one yet, but uh, I know that there's, you guys are providing also a platform for ongoing conversations to, to talk about these different topics. But uh, that would be something that would be interesting to me because uh, we don't want to recreate the wheel if somebody is already doing it well. Mm -hmm. And then we can all learn from everybody's experience. So that's that's a particular data point that I'm very interested in. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you for that. And um, as a quick response to that as well, so two things I could bring up. Um, one is that, and you already brought this up, but yes, we do have that community site that we set up earlier this year. Um, you can get to that um, as a CF Insights member by going to cfinsights.canada.org. There is a login um, right there. It's community login button in the upper right-hand corner. I will mention, just to reiterate, the one login integration with the data site, that if you have a login with the data site, that login will also work to access the community site as well. So you don't need to to keep a uh, you know a notepad with with five passwords or anything like that <laughs> to access different candidate uh, systems anymore. Um, so yes, that that platform is open for folks um, with community foundations to bring up other questions of, about best practices um, and and related items like that that we might not currently support in a straightforward data fashion. 
um, on the web on the uh, data platform. So that's a way for us to get get those conversations started. Um, and then if something rises to the level of um, something that that might be of interest to a larger portion of the membership or even to the wider field, that's something that we'll take a very serious look at, either adding to the data platform or maybe hosting an event that's a uh, that's targeted to that particular conversation as well. So, um, so thank you for mentioning that. Anybody else venture to uh, maybe share a piece of data that they might be interested in us collecting or making available through our annual survey next year? David, I don't know the yeah. I don't know the exact uh, uh, question to be asking, but you yeah. know. I'm, I'm active in leadership in our state of Wisconsin Community Foundation group. And we've tried to do our own internal surveys just to try to compare and contrast things like, like uh, um, employee benefits and programs that we provide to our staff members. Um, that might be getting a little bit deeper into, uh, uh, into the details than what CF Insights and Candid are really interested in. But it's a question that we find that every couple of years we're we're polling ourselves and trying to gather that data. So that might be a that might be an idea. Thanks for that. Yeah, at the moment, at least anyway, we um, we collect you know we collect that information on the aggregate level, so it doesn't break down really too much by by function or by um, by heart you know by uh, title or anything like that on the CF Insights website. There are definitely other resources that provide that. Um, I know there's one um, that the Council on Foundations provides, um, and so. Uh, you know, we partner with them very closely, and um, we we have a different version of that data. But certainly, you know, we can talk about um, the, the utility of having it. Yeah. All right. So I think we have five minutes left. I'm happy to stay on the line if anybody has any particular questions. But otherwise, I think we are probably okay to end a little bit early. Um, I want to thank Kurt and Mito so much for um, uh, for speaking with us all today and sharing your experience with us. Um, and again, if anybody has any questions, even after the session, you can always email me um, or you can email us rather at cfinsights at uh, candid.org. Um, and again, I will also be in a networking session at the end of the day after our last session, our Minneapolis Foundation session. So if you want to come chat at that point, I will be there as well for a little while. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.